Welcome to First United Methodist Church, Wichita Falls, on this day for World Communion Sunday. As you can see, we have a beautiful set up here behind me to remind us that when we celebrate communion, when we celebrate that holy sacrament, we are celebrating it with Christians all around the world. We want to welcome each of you today and want to welcome those who are joining us via television and internet. You are as much a part of our congregation as the people seated here on the front row of our church. So welcome to each of you today. Let us now continue with our worship service. If you would join for the call to worship, if you would stand and join with me in the call to worship that you'll find printed in your bulletins. We are here because we have heard the call of Jesus in our lives. We have gathered here because we want to be God's people. We have come seeking to be made whole by the Spirit of the living God. Let us praise our God. You may be seated. Methodist Church in the heart of Wichita Falls. Children, youth, and adults find new hope and meaning in life through a relationship with Jesus Christ and the many activities at First United Methodist Church. Thanks for joining us today at our beautiful sanctuary at 10th and Travis, the heart of the city of Wichita Falls.
Please join with me in the affirmation of faith that you'll find printed in your bulletin. Today we'll be using a modern affirmation. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe, we believe in God, God the Father, Father infinite in wisdom, wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. You may be seated. Let us join into a time of spirit of prayer and let's begin our prayer time with our congregational prayer which is printed in our worship program. Let us pray together. Almighty God, on this day when we celebrate the sacred meal of your son with Christians around the world, help us to always remember that you are the God of all people. Teach us to live full-bodied Christian lives, enabling us to reach out and minister to the needs of others. Touch our hearts until they are wholly committed to your will. We pray for those around the world who need you in a special way today. We pray all of these things in the holy name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of all. Amen. As we continue our time of prayer, I ask that you remember these persons in your prayers this morning and throughout this week. Bob Brotherton, Sean Butler, Don and June Cowan, Jeremy Johnson, Helen Johnston, Sally Kern, Gary Leach, Mary Alice McLeod, Christy Milstead, Dr. John Mitchell, and also remember the family and friends of a longtime church member, Rosie Wilson. We celebrated her life yesterday. And a joy of celebration that Nell and Gail Sogard had celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary this past week. Let us be in a spirit of silent prayer as we, as we speak to the Lord and I'll lead us in our morning prayer. The skies proclaim your handiwork. The earth announces your glory. Your word and love burst forth into our lives like a glorious sunrise. You speak and our hearts rejoice. The sound of your voice brings revival to our souls. O oh God, we thank you and we praise you that you think of us and pay attention to us. 
Help us to see you at work in our world and our lives and to listen to your word, which brings revival to us. Forgive us when we do things ourselves and fail to rely upon you. Just think how much better the world would be if we used our energies and resources in cooperation with you, in step with you, instead of just on our own. We do lots of good things, but just think how much better that world would be if we truly depend upon you for wisdom and discernment. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we seek to fulfill our mission to grow in Christian action and faith. We pray for those with physical concerns and needs. You know and see each one, and you know how to meet them right exactly at this point of their individual needs. Please assure them of your love and concern. Be present with those who are discouraged and lift them up today. May they be reminded of something from your word or maybe a verse from a song or even a word of assurance from a brother or sister in Christ. We pray for our nation today and for godly influences to be among our leaders in our national government and our state and local levels. We're thankful for the freedom and peace and safety we enjoy that many countries around the world don't have. We pray for our troops around the world as they continue to work for freedom and justice. And we continue to pray for rain and the end of our drought. We pray for Pastor Paul as he preaches today. May the words come through the power and authority of your Holy Spirit. We pray all this with thanksgiving in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning and again welcome to First United Methodist Church. We are delighted that you have joined us for worship today and if you are a guest today, first time here, we want to say a special word of welcome to you and ask that you might take a welcome gift or a bag that we have in the back of the sanctuary or on the table as you go out the door by the fellowship or by the chapel. At this time I invite you to stand and to pass the love of Christ with your neighbors. <coughs> I'm just following Kia.
If you haven't done so already, we ask that you might take a few minutes and sign the registration pads, which you'll find on the aisle. Normally, they're going to be on the inside aisle. Ask that you might pass them down so you get to know each other, and we might have a record of your attendance. We appreciate that. Please look in the bulletin for all the announcements and activities and opportunities to grow and, and to serve in the life of our church. I want to highlight three things real quickly. Number one is please see the note in the back panel about the high five for smiles drive of collecting dental supplies to help with people in our community. So please make note of that and support that. On November the 7th there will be the Women's Spiritual Renewal Brunch. So we invite all the women to be a part of that morning of celebration of prayer. And then two weeks from today, we will be relocating our Sunday morning worship service from the sanctuary to the fellowship hall. So I just want you to be aware of that and ask that you will be in prayer as we make that transition um, for all the little details that have, have to happen between now and then. At this time, I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward that we might receive our morning offering. As they come forward, I just want to share a good news is that I'm the one that's responsible for paying all the bills in the life of the church. And I want to say thank you for your support and your investment in the life of the church that enables me to do that. But this past week, we had the opportunity to send over $1,700 to the conference office to help out with the United Methodist Children's Home to help out with Great Hour of Sharing, which goes to UMCOR. And many of you are aware of the Ebola outbreak in West Africa, and it's even got a little bit closer as a case has been discovered in Dallas. And some of our money that we give to UMCOR is already at work there, trying to make a difference in the lives, in the lives of those people and throughout the world. So thank you for investing in our church and in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your presence and your love and your many blessings. May you take our gifts and our offerings that we may give in that same spirit that Christ gave to us, that you might so direct the use of these gifts that would bring glory to you and to your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
couple of things before I read our passage this morning. Number one, uh, thanks to Ann Clark's, uh, Clarkson and Gail Key. Uh, they made this beautiful table of bread, uh, international bread. Uh, it looks so beautiful, it looks fake, but each and every loaf is real. Uh, and a couple of us are going to grab loaves after the service. Uh, if there's any left after we grab, I mean, after those people grab theirs, then uh, you're more than welcome. Also, I don't want you to miss seeing this. Uh, you can't see it right now, and you might miss it the entire show. The entire show, the entire. Uh, Keo, come here. Let you see his beautiful. Uh... Thank you. Thank you. I meant to say you will miss seeing him. I don't know where the word show came out. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Ecclesiastes, the book of wisdom, or one of the books of wisdom. The fourth chapter, verses 9 and 10, you'll find it beginning on page 616 uh, on, in your pew Bible if you wish to read along. Hear these words of wisdom. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though one might prevail against another, two will withstand one. A threefold, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. May God add God's blessings and understanding to the reading and hearing of this portion of God's holy word. When I uh, was young and growing up, uh, I didn't go fishing uh, very much. Uh, I guess maybe as I think back, I went fishing maybe three times, maybe four times, uh, uh, all with my father. Uh, we would, uh, uh, if we were on a, a lake or something, a, a big a stock tank, uh, we would get in a rowboat and I'd have a cane pole and a, a hook with a, a worm that I made my father put on for me. And I just hung, it, hung the cane pole over the side. If we happened to be at a lake or a bigger tank, uh, we would fish off the edge of, of a uh, uh, pier. And, uh, but when we first moved to our church down at uh, Cedar Creek Lake, um, I first met in that first uh, summer we were there, a uh, uh, nice young man my age, and, and he loved to play golf, and I loved to play golf, so we played a bunch of golf that summer, played a bunch of golf in the fall, and then when spring came, early spring, like in February, he called me and said, do you, do you go fishing? Do you like to fish? And I said, well, sure. I said, uh, like every red-blooded Texan, I, I love to fish. I uh, hadn't been fishing in 20 years, but I loved to fish. So anyway, I told him I, I uh, left my uh, equipment uh, back here in Wichita Falls, so he was going to have to bring me some. And, of course, I didn't own any equipment at the time. And he said, no problem. He came by the next morning in his pickup, and off we went. I thought we were going to the lake, but he took us out to this uh, Big, big stock tank, you can call it a pond if you will. When we pulled in, uh, I didn't see a pier. And so I said, well, where's the boat? And he said, we don't need a boat. We're going to walk up and down uh, the shoreline. And I went, what far? And he said, to fish. That's how we're going to cast from there. So he gave me a rod and reel. I think I had seen one once before, never used one. Sure enough, uh, I cast, and it, uh, all the line got all tangled up and in knots, and it, three times I tried and couldn't get it. Finally, the fourth time, 
I cast out into the uh, stock tank. As luck would have it, as God would have it, uh, I caught a fish. Uh, not just any fish, uh, but a, a, a four to five pound uh, largemouth uh, bass, black bass, huge fish. It was about that big. <laughs> and uh, if you've ever gone bass fi fishing, you know uh, that they are heavy. And uh, sometimes when you catch a big one, you think you're hung on a log. Well, I tried to uh, reel in the fish and I couldn't get him in. So I started backing up. And I walked about 60 feet up, up from the shore, just dragging that fish until it came out of the water. My friend looked over and saw me and he said, what are you doing up there? And I said, well, I caught a fish and there it is down there. And he said, well, go get it. And I said, why? And he said, because you need to get the hook out of it. So I walked down there and picked the fish up by its tail and started shaking it like that, and the, the, uh, the hook didn't come out at all. That's when he came to the conclusion that I didn't know the first thing about fishing. And instead of embarrassing me and chiding me for not knowing anything, he just kind of laughed, and I started laughing. And you know, not only did he save me embarrassment that day, but the, the next seven years that we were there, he never mentioned that to another soul. Uh, he only brought it up with me when we'd go play golf or, or go fishing. Saved me a lot of embarrassment that day and then for seven years. And I, I thought of this as I was thinking the other day when uh, I ran across our scripture passage. ago, And I started thinking about all of the people in my life, who have helped me or who have kept me from making mistakes, saved me from making mistakes, or saved me from hurting myself or from maybe hurting somebody else. Uh, we all need people who will do that for us, who will help us, who will save us, if you will. Those who point out to us any destructive behavior that we might be doing or experiencing, who will remind us of it's the importance of, of where and how we spend our time, who will keep us from making wrong moral choices, those people who will bring us light when we are in the darkness of uh, disappointment or confusion or depression. In my life, as I'm sure in your life, there have been doctors, there have been teachers, there have been neighbors, there's been family members, friends, there's even been strangers. These and others are those who help us in life. And that's why I think our passage in Ecclesiastes uh, makes one of the greatest statements, greatest truths about life that there is in all of the Bible. When we read two are better than one. For woe to the one who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Woe to the one who is alone and doesn't have someone who can lift them up. And of course, the greatest need for any and everyone, anybody and everybody, is of course for the Savior, Jesus Christ. For the one who can lift us out of this life into a new life, into a better life, into a life that can't be overwhelmed or can't be defeated. God knew that we needed a Savior. God sent word hundreds of years before Jesus was born that this is exactly what God was going to do. Send a Messiah, send a, a, the Savior. The prophets like Isaiah, said that the Messiah was going to come and going to establish the kingdom of God, but he wasn't going to be a mighty warrior. He wasn't going to be a great king. He was coming to us as a child, as a baby. And then, of course, we know the angel speaking to Joseph, 
told Joseph that Mary was with child and that when the child was born, Joseph was to name him Jesus because Jesus means he will save people from their sins. Yes, we all need a Savior. We all need the Christ in our lives. But accepting Christ doesn't mean uh, that we'll have all of the answers to the questions of life, or that we'll be able to solve all the mysteries of life. I've said that before many times. I'll say it many times in the future. But what Christ can do is enable us to live a wonderful life full and rich and blessed in spite of the questions that we have and in spite of the mysteries that are there. You know, all of the advances in technology and all of the knowledge that we have today and that we'll get in the future, that still will not give us all the answers to life. Life is much greater than we can imagine. The mysteries of life, we'll never understand them all. But that's okay. We don't have to have the answers. We don't have to solve all of the mysteries. God sent us Christ to offer us an opportunity to be raised to a new life, to be lifted, to use the words of Ecclesiastes, to a new life. In a few moments when we come to the altar rail to receive the elements of, of communion, I've thought for a long time that it's a symbolic act. When we come, if we are able to come to the altar, whether we are able to kneel or not doesn't matter. But when we come forward like that, we are making a silent statement, a symbolic statement, that we need a Savior and that we have chosen Christ to be the Savior of our life. And then we celebrate that decision and that choice by partaking of the bread and the partaking of the juice. And today, more than any other single Sunday, there will be more Christians around the world taking communion together. Again, celebrating the fact that Christ came to us to be our Savior. Let's bow once more as we pray. Gracious, loving, and giving God, we thank you for what you have done for us and to us by sending us Christ our Lord. Help us, O oh God, to indeed let him lift us up to a new life in the full joy of this, your kingdom, we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. As you see and as you have heard, we will be celebrating the sacrament of communion this morning. We will... In the, in the United Methodist Church, we practice an open communion, which simply means you do not have to be a member of the United Methodist Church. You do not have to be a member of this church, this congregation, to come and to receive the elements. The elements are offered to all. The invitation reads, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Let us continue now in a moment as we join in the great thanksgiving found on page 13 in your hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We invite you to indeed come to the altar rail in, in a moment. We, uh, and this morning our altar rail offering will go to support uh, the meal that we have once a month uh, for those right here in our neighborhood. Uh, so if you'd like to participate and contribute to that, uh, the offering will be going uh, to offset the cost of those meals uh, each month. And now if you will come, you're to, able to come and you're welcome to stay for as long or as brief as you wish.
as we come to the close of our worship service, as always, we close with an invitation. If there be any present this morning who for the first time wish to profess their faith in Christ as Lord, or who wish to become a part of this congregation, we invite you to come and to meet us at the steps of our altar as we sing. This morning our closing hymn is Let Us Break Bread Together, number 618. Let us stand as we sing together. to have you in worship this morning. I hope you have had God touch your heart during the service. I also hope you're able to enjoy what looks to be a beautiful, beautiful day in the life of God's kingdom. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you have a blessed week and then are able to be with us in worship again next Sunday. Now let us join in our benediction. We have been called to follow Christ. Jesus gave himself in love for the sake of the whole world. Let us live in the spirit of Christ and hate, not to be served, but to serve. Amen and amen.